The following program is appropriate for all ages and sensory friendly. Three, two, one. From Chicago, this is the Autism Channel World News with Roger Badish. Hi, and thanks for joining us on the Autism Channel World News. You know, the game of hockey has developed an infamous institution, the goal horn. When the home team scores, the achievement is signaled with a loud blaring foghorn or train horn. It's a phenomenon that can keep a family affected by autism out of the rink, no matter how much they love the fast-paced, hard-hitting game. But in the hockey hotbed of upstate New York, one team is turning off the horn. And it's not because no one's scoring goals. This Sunday, it's sensory-friendly hockey night in Albany as the RPI men's hockey team holds its second annual autism awareness game. RPI will play a special exhibition game with the under-18 U.S. national team, a developmental program for international tournaments. In addition to shutting off the goal horn, the game will be played without music, bright lights, or jumbotron distractions. The first 500 fans to arrive will receive a free Autism Awareness shirt, which the stars of the RPI team will sign after the game. The event will raise funds for the Autism Society of Albany. From hockey comes a natural segue to news from Canada, where the Auditor General of Ontario is examining the government's ability to meet the health care needs of its population, particularly with respect to autism. Bonnie Lissick holds the Office of Auditor General for Ontario, where she is charged with examining and reporting on the efficacy and efficiency of the provincial government, currently controlled by Canada's Liberal Party. With nearly 13 million residents, most of them within 50 miles of the American border, Ontario is Canada's most populous province and the United States' closest neighbor. The auditor's findings will be pertinent to those American neighbors as the product of a nationalized healthcare system now facing a sharp increase in autism diagnosis. In the Autism Channel's hometown of West Palm Beach, a school for autism is focusing its efforts on the lower end of the spectrum. While there are many on the spectrum who struggle to make the most of their gifts, there are also those who struggle to complete basic living tasks. At West Palm Beach's Renaissance Learning Center, instructors seek to impart these daily life skills on young students, hopefully setting the stage for further achievement later. At Renaissance, the goal of the faculty is to teach children with autism how to live independently, developing the everyday skills so many of us take for granted. Daily hygiene, sorting clothes, or doing basic chores. From there, students enter vocational training, learning tasks that can help them find employment. While it may not seem like much to some, Renaissance sees these lessons as the small victories that can lead to bigger ones for people on the spectrum. And we can certainly see the symptoms of autism in people, but can we truly see autism? According to one far-reaching inventory of brain scans, not yet, not reliably at least, a new study in Frontiers in hum Human Neuroscience find that while a single site study of brain imaging can identify autism with 80% accuracy, a multi-site study has only 60% accuracy. Researchers point to discrepancies in equipment and methods across various sites. Researchers hope that a larger sample size will help them to identify and define subgroups of autism zeroing in on the parts of the brain that are affected and how they go on to express symptoms of autism. What complicates the more expansive study? According to Vinod Menon of Stanford University, differences in ages of participants and quality of MRIs detract from the uniformity needed to make reliable conclusions. And finally, positive recognition is coming to two students at Austin Pay State University in Tennessee, Tiffany Anderson and Kelsey Keith were recognized for their presentation at the conference of the Tennessee Association of School Psychologists. With the advent of the DSM-5 and its new definition of autism, they recommended that the Tennessee's Department of Education synchronize its own definition of autism with the one now being employed by the state's medical professionals. For their persuasive argument and presentation, the two Austin Pay students received an honorarium and publication in the journal Tennessee School Psychologist. That's it for this edition of the Autism Channel World News. I'm Roger Badish. On behalf of the entire Autism Channel family, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.
Join us again tomorrow for the Autism Channel World News with Roger Badish. I'm Mary Beth Marsden. I'm Debbie Dacus, and this is the Autism Channel.